Hey, good morning. It's uh, February 26th, Friday. Uh, get just two more days to go in February, and then we're into March. One-sixth of 2021 is gone. Amazing. This morning, I want to look at words and proverbs that have to do with healing words. So much of the upset and trouble that we have in life and the discomfort, unease that we have has to do with the words that we speak. People who are irritating to us, sometimes it's our words that bring out that irritation. Not always, but sometimes. Well, there's a four portions, four lines, four verses in Proverbs 15, which I believe need to be taken as a unit. They fit very much with Proverbs 16 about the importance of pleasant words, but this is in the context of words that heal. I think this is where we want to be. Our words are either going to be destructive or they're going to heal. There really isn't any middle ground. We like to think there's a middle ground where we can coast, but really, they're either building up, healing, or they're tearing down and being destructive. So listen to these four lines, if you will, in, in Proverbs 15. A gentle answer turns away wrath. But a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge pleasant, but the mouth of fools spouts or gushes foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, watching the good and the evil. A soothing tongue is a tree of life, but perversion in it crushes the spirit. I'm persuaded that when James was writing chapter three of his epistle. These words in Proverbs 15 and 16 were resonating in his heart and right through his pen as he wrote. Let me go through this a little more slowly. A gentle answer turns away wrath. In other words, it pushes away, it stops it, it propitiates it, makes it go the other way. But a harsh word stirs it up. You know, we talk about stirring the pot. And again, we've talked about this a fair amount in, in, in these videos, but this is the beginning. It sets it up. A soft, gentle answer gets rid of wrath, brings healing. Harsh word stirs it up. But then verse two, the tongue of the wise makes knowledge pleasant or makes it attractive, desirable. So this goes beyond the pleasant words promoting instruction of Proverbs 16, sets the stage for Proverbs 16. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge pleasant, attractive, desirable. However, in contrast, the mouth of fools spouts foolishness or gushes foolishness. All right? And remember, foolishness is something that is not representing what Scripture says. It may even be logical. It may even be sound correct. But it's not taking into account the purpose of God. Bruce Walkie's commentary has this unbelievably useful insight about this, this passage. The wise have tongues controlled by loving emotions and sound thought, and so speak in a way that makes their internalized knowledge of God's order attractive. So it's assuming that you've already bought into the things of God. They're part of yours. You're just not spouting out a bunch of rules and regulations, but you have come to love this yourself, just as Deuteronomy 6 urges us to. Take these things, put them on your hearts, and impress them on the hearts of your children. But then he contrasts this, the commentary contrasts this, Instead of brutalizing people with their knowledge of the cause-effect relationship with God's ordained or moral order. In other words, if you just pound away, well, you do this, this happen. You do this, do this happen. There is a cause and effect. But if we lose sight of our purpose of winning and loving, we're going to not heal but drive away. So in contrast to this brutalizing of just cause and effect, you do this, you do that, you're in trouble. And contrasting that, the wise state it kindly, sensitively, and gently with an aim to save their audience, not to condemn or destroy it. 
Do your children believe you're out to save them? Do the people you're trying to instruct think that you want to help them? Or do they think you're just doing a data dump on them and making them feel bad? And this is equally important for self-talk. If you talk to yourself in this cause and effect, beat yourself up type of fashion, you're brutalizing yourself in a way that's not helpful. Rather, we want to be focused on things that are have a loving God's word so it's internalized, so we're speaking with kindness, sensitivity, and loving emotions. Loving emotions and sound thought. They go together, loving emotions and sound thought. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, watching the evil and the good. What this reminds us of is that God is a part of every conversation, every one. So in my day-to-day -day upset, if I'm speaking in these words that are not healing, I'm, I'm condemning God right, right there because he's always there. And then the last line, verse 4. A soothing tongue is a tree of life. But perversion in it crushes the spirit. That's perversion in the, in the, in the tongue. So the, the soothing could be calm or healing. So a healing tongue is a tree of life. It gives life to everyone. But the perversion in it, it crushes or fractures the spirit. F crushes or fractures. And how many of our conversations, how many conversations could I think that I've had have fractured the person I'm talking to by what I think is truth? And I feel justified because, well, it's true. Well, it's not enough for it to be true. It's not enough to be right. It's got to be combined with this idea of bringing healing. So a healing tongue mends those fractures. Think about these words in Proverbs 15. Meditate on them. Read these things over. They are words that heal. And the people that you and I love, they don't need our, our harshness, our arrogance. They need the healing words of the Spirit of God, spoken by truth, with a loving spirit, with emotions that are overflowing with love, based upon the sound thought of God's word. And that's the thought for the day. And, uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tonight. Thanks so much for being here. Healing words. Healing words are a tree of life. Have a great day. Bye-bye.